What if we told you that one of the world's most underestimated fighter jets could outrun the F-16, strike with precision, and survive decades of combat? Welcome to the next-gen world, and today we're unlocking the secrets of the IIKFIR, Israel's supersonic beast that shocked the skies and still holds its ground even today. Born from the need for independence, shaped by innovation, and tested in real-world battlefields, the IIKFIR is not just a fighter jet, it's a legacy of survival, speed, and sheer ingenuity. Let's journey through its creation, performance, combat history, and why it's still flying today, over 50 years since it first took to the skies. The story of the KFIR begins in the late 1960s, when Israel's access to modern French aircraft was abruptly cut off. At that time, Israel had been operating the Mirage 3, a capable fighter jet built by Dassault Aviation. But due to a French arms embargo, Israel was forced to pivot. And what happened next changed its aviation history forever. Israeli engineers secretly reverse-engineered the Mirage 5, and from that ambitious move came the Nesher, Israel's first domestically produced fighter. But that was just the beginning. Israel Aerospace Industries II, pushed even further, taking the airframe of the Mirage and combining it with a powerful American General Electric J-79 engine, the same engine used in the F for Phantom. The result? The KFIR meaning Young Lion in Hebrew, a jet faster, stronger, and more advanced than its French predecessor. The KFIR's top speed? Mach 2.3, faster than most fourth-generation fighters. It could climb at an astonishing rate of over 30,000 feet per minute and fly at altitudes exceeding 50,000 feet. The J-79 engine gave it not just speed, but raw, unmatched thrust, making the KFIR a true supersonic interceptor. And yet, it wasn't just a fast jet, it was incredibly versatile. Armed with air-to-air -air missiles like the Schaffer and Python series, laser-guided bombs, and electronic warfare pods, the KFIR could perform dogfighting, strike missions, and reconnaissance. Its advanced radar and targeting systems, continually upgraded over time, allowed it to rival the best of its era. And with modern avionics packages and later versions like the KFIR C.10 and Block 60, it became a multi-role workhorse. But perhaps what made the KFIR legendary wasn't just its specs, it was how it proved itself in combat. Israel used it in the 1970s and 80s for deep strike missions, including surgical operations against enemy missile sites and key infrastructure. It flew in contested airspace, often surrounded by hostile radars and SAM systems, yet came back with minimal losses. Its performance during the Lebanon War, particularly in 1982, was a clear demonstration of Israeli air dominance. And it didn't stop there. The KFIR has served, and continues to serve, in multiple air forces around the world. Colombia, Sri Lanka, Ecuador, and even the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps have used the KFIR as an aggressor aircraft to simulate enemy fighters and training exercises. Why? Because its speed and agility make it a perfect stand-in for advanced threats. Take Columbia, for instance. They've upgraded their fleet to the KFIR C.10 standard, giving them advanced radar, helmet-mounted displays, and even beyond visual range missile capability. Sri Lanka used the KFIR during its civil war to carry out precision bombing runs. And the U.S. Navy valued the KFIR's Mach 2 speed for dissimilar air combat training, DCD, where realism is key to preparing pilots for real dogfights. The aircraft's legacy continues thanks to II's ongoing upgrades. Modern Kfirs feature glass cockpits, EL-M 2032 radar systems, in compatibility with modern munitions. In an era dominated by 5th gen stealth jets, why is the KFIR still relevant? Because it's cost effective, reliable, easy to maintain, and can deliver a punch that matches jets costing three times more. One of the most unique aspects of the KFIR is its hybrid heritage a French airframe, an American engine, and Israeli innovation. This East meets West combination resulted in a machine that could outperform many of its contemporaries and even challenge jets far newer than itself. 
It's a rare example of how necessity drives invention and how a country under embargo turned adversity into an aerospace triumph. So where does the KFIR stand today? While Israel retired the KFIR years ago, it continues to evolve. II has offered a modernized KFIR NG, next generation, variant for export, featuring cutting edge tech and weapons integration. For countries looking for capable fighter power without the massive price tag of modern Western jets, the KFIR remains a serious option. It's not stealthy. It doesn't have thrust vectoring or the hype of an F-35. But it doesn't need to. The IIKFIR is proof that with smart design, ruthless efficiency, and continuous innovation, even a jet born in the 1970s can still dominate in the 2020s. And that's the legacy of the KFIR, a jet built from necessity, refined by war, and reborn through engineering excellence. Whether you see it as an underdog, a survivor, or a symbol of ingenuity, one thing is clear, the IIKFIR has earned its place among the world's most respected fighter jets. Thanks for watching the Next Gen World. If you enjoyed this deep dive into Israel's supersonic beast, hit that like button, subscribe for more cutting-edge aviation content, and let us know in the comments which aircraft you'd like us to cover next. Stay sharp, stay curious, and we'll see you in the skies.